Greeting, friends. I'm Vasil Ostri, and we'll talk about how to save astronauts in our children. Here is a story that I'd like to read you. It was the last school day. Father, I have a letter for you. And he said, Father, I have to notify you that I have had to leave my home with my new girl, as I knew that you and mom would have quarrel about what I have to say. I love her very much, but I know that you would not approve of our relationship due to her piercing tattoos and biking closing and the fact that she is much older than me. But the matter is not just in feelings. She's pregnant. Her name is Sarah, and she's sure that we would be happy together because she has a trailer in the forest and a lot of firewood, enough for the whole winter. We dream to have many children. Sarah opened my eyes to the fact that marijuana is not as dangerous, in fact, and we plan to grow it for ourselves and to sell to others in order to have enough money for cocaine. It's not dangerous if you use it in small doses. And at the same time, we'll pray for the fact that HIV medicine would be found because uh, Sarah deserves to be saved. Don't worry, Daddy. I'm already 15 and I can take care of myself. One day we'll come to um, um, help, help you meet our uh, grandchildren. With love, your son Joshua. Postscriptum, uh, Daddy, I just um, imagined everything. I'm with Jason, but... Um, my record card is at the desk, so I will come as soon as uh, you understand that there are more important things in life than just great. So, we'll talk about our children, our teenagers. They have huge potential and they need to use all the opportunities of their great age. I'd like to introduce participants of our discussion. Oleg Povlitschuk, greetings. Hello, Oleg, Pastor in a church, and he is father to two teenagers. Yes, I've been listening to this story. I just imagined if I was reading this letter. So that was scary thing. Funny story. Your uh, Bahdan, did he make such surprises uh, for you? Not like this. Not yet. But he would uh, love to amaze me. As um, uh, his sister, Bogdan, who is 16, and Darina, who is 13. Everything is ahead of us. All right, thank you for agreeing to be with us today. And you might want to mention some stories. And uh, yes, I will uh, tell some stories I told Bogdan about uh, this presentation. I told him what I would um, say, and I promised not to say anything bad. And only after Bogdan agreed, then uh, I agreed myself. It was easier to agree with Darina, and that's why I took the honor of participating in this show. Uh, Bogdan and Darina, thank you for inviting, uh, allowing your father to be with us. We also have Mikola Oshovsky. He's a geography teacher. How long have you been working with teenagers in school or outside your life related to ninja, na, teenagers? Since 2011, I've been working with teenagers. I served in teenage ministry, then in youth ministry, and then maybe in the last four years, I've been teaching geography in school. Now, I am teaching from grade 5 to 11, all ages of middle school and high school. In how many school, uh, schools did you teach? Actually, I lost count, but I started teaching in secondary school. Then I understood that I want more freedom and more new approaches. And I understood that it's important to look for private schools. We, I taught in four schools last year. This year, just uh, two schools, but three different locations. I dream to remain in just one school in the future because it's quite, quite hard. Okay, question for you, Oleg. Your father of teenagers. What one thing you can tell about teenagers and Mikola? 
talking about your experience of relations with teenagers, education, camps, everything. What one thing would you say? Talking about not just my teenagers, but overall, because I can assess them from standpoint of pastoral ministry and see some overall picture, I think that modern teenagers and young people are ones who mature um, or grow up very fast, but mature very long. And that makes life very difficult for them because they get many challenges, problems they have to overcome somehow. Thank you, Mikola. I'd add that from my experience as a teacher, the first thing about them is they're lost and confused. Girls 12 to 13, boys 13 to 14, when hormonal changes begin, the first thing that comes in is confusion. They need to find themselves, their identity. They're belonging to a certain group because that's when authority of father and mother would be questioned. And for me, the authority comes from the person who gives me social significance. This is confusion time, but also time of great growth, great opportunity, or great disappointment and great fall. This is a point from where you would go up or down. You cannot just stay long in this point. So we can say that teenage time is a time of most significant decisions. Yes, uh, 95, 98 mistakes that a person does in their life. That would be age 13 or 14 towards 20. Good. Thank you. Interesting fact. Oleg taught professional orientation. Well, I taught many things until I got my own children. I taught age, psychology, and professional orientation, and how to raise children, many other things, until I had some of my own. And I turned out to realize that I have a very little competence in many areas because it's one thing to teach, the other thing to practice. Nikolai, Mikola, you're teaching professional orientation. You are co-author of professional orientation course. Yes, we had four colleagues who wrote together this curriculum. We are teaching it in school or privately, professional orientation. We'll talk about this sometime later, but right now, let's remember your teenage years. Who did you want to become and who did you become? In fact, Oleg, what were your teenage dreams? What did you dream about? As a teenager, I was born in 1990s. That's last century. I remember when I studied in ninth grade in Rivna school, many of my classmates wanted to graduate as soon as possible and to go join criminal gang because that was the time and place of security and living money, authority, and everything else. I thank God that at that time I found the Lord or Lord found me and from Teenage time, he put desire in my heart to serve. So, I believe that I'm a teenager who looks back and rejoices that God gave me opportunity, recognized me worthy, and gave me grace to serve. I did not dream to become a pastor, but I really wanted to preach the Word of God. I'm happy that this is coming true right now. Great. What's your professional experience? How many professions have you changed before you became a pastor and serve as a pastor? I started with alternative military service. So I worked as electrician and I was working as electrician a bit before my alternative service. Then after alternative service, I was working for publishing house, uh, editing, correction, proofreading, layout, 
Then I went to camp ministry. I was teaching at camp seminars and I was running camps. That's a significant part of my life. Then there was a period of journalism. After that, I felt the calling and everything worked out with God's help that I would be a pastor and I'm a full-time pastor right now. Electrician, layout specialist, children's camp worker, and journalist. Four. Four professions. Great. Mikola, you said you changed ten professions over ten years. Yes. After graduating university and I till age of 30, I think I changed at least ten professions from the beginning, going back to my teenage years, I remember that I wanted to be anyone, everyone. But that was a great time of new opportunities. When in teenage years, I was going through transformation, I tried cigarettes, I tried light drugs. And by the age of 14, I was realizing that I go lower and lower. But God's mercy was always with me. I knew God. I was in church until 11 or 12. But I spent all my teenage years on the street. I had mother, but she was divorced. And in fact... Maybe until the age of 20, that was a difficult time. So when I came to the Lord, the Lord found me in this world. He called me for the second time. I responded to his call, and from that time, my ministry was with teenagers. I understand that period. I understand what issues I have not resolved in my teenage years. So after I came to the Lord, I started looking for who I could be or what I could be. I was in sales. Then I went into management. I was a director of a company for even six months. But then I came back to my calling, a dream to be a teacher when I was five or seven, I love to teach my peers, like throwing raspberries in the air and uh, catching it, uh, the berries with my mouth. I love to learn new things and teach other children to do new things. So 10 professions over 10 years. Why did you do that? I was searching myself. For what I was. That was teenage time, uh, grades 6 through 10, when teenagers searched themselves. These years were lost for me. So I was catching up at 20, 22, when I was already married. I had to feed my family, so I had to find what I was and how I could earn some money. So switching profession once a year is normal. Yes, for many countries, of the world, that's normal for a person to change professional career three, two times a life. Okay, let's consider teenage years and what teenage years are. Someone said that teenage time is a period of storm and stress or great opportunities or great fails, like Mikola said. So what are the main characteristics of teenage years? What are markers that um, parents and uh, educators need to remember for teenage years? Several questions come to my mind. Questions that a teenager or a person at any age can ask. A teenager experiences those things most acutely. First, question of identity. Question who I am. Not adult uh, yet, not a child anymore. Hormonal changes, crisis of faith. When they 
remove the clothing of their parents' faith and they either remain naked or they are dressed in their own faith. So they need to know whether the God of my father is my God. Exactly. So children's revolt in matters of faith, in matters of home worship, matters of going to church. This is something complicated and even painful for parents, especially ministering parents. But it's natural process yeah, to some degree. And if parents begin behave properly, then it will be completed well with God's help. So first question of identity, who I am. Do you agree, Mikola? 101% in agreement. Second is identity who I am and who I am with. Children are not related, connected to parents so much. There are exceptions, of course, but in majority, teenagers would identify themselves with the street, with older comrades. If that's a church teenager, they would look for older friends in the church to be their authority. That could be a coach if teenager does sports. And that often happens that most influential person in the life of teenager would be a coach. We even had this research. At second place, you'd have mother. And then maybe a place four or five, you would have father. So who I am, who I'm with, identity matters. And then the reason, the sense of my existence, actualization, What's my calling? What's my place in this huge world? These three questions are most acute at the age of 13 and until maybe age of 18 or 19, I think. I think 18, 19. Right. We are characterizing teenage years when parents do not have as much influence and authority for children but there is influence of friends, street, coach. It could be positive example that's good or negative. It's bad, but how do we help them as parents? Is we as we understand that our influence, our authority decrease. I remember this scheme that maturity of a person is characterized by their responsibility. We can transfer responsibility or responsibility for, to somebody else. But maturity means I'm responsible for my words, for my actions, for myself. And I take the consequences of everything I choose. That's very important. Another characteristic of teenage years is when I want to use benefits of adults, but I don't want to take responsibility like in boy-girl relationship. We want to live as a family or that would seem like a family, but I don't want to get married. I don't want to earn for the family. I don't want to bring children into the world. So we need sensitivity and wisdom how to impact them better. Like you said, Oleg, who am I with? That's an important question. I've heard these uh, statistics that uh, more than 80% of teenage crimes are committed in group. There was a group, someone initiates evil action, and because we are friends and we're spending time together, I join in. Like, Mikola, you said about your life, that you spent... A lot of life on the street. That was a bad company? Yes, absolutely. Just like I said, maybe at the age of 12, the socialization trans transformation begins. The decision-making center goes from parents to some mini or mega society that would give me advantages. Friends outside uh, are saying that Hat is not nice. Mother says, wear your hat. It's cold outside, but the authority of that group is more important, so I'll take that hat off. How do you give this proper identity when they ask questions? Who am I? How do you help your children fighting their identity? 
How do you help a child to understand themselves better and to accept themselves better? It would be good to go to the Word of God, to some letter, some chapter that talks about the principles of raising teenagers. In first glance, you might not find such a letter in the Bible that talks about uh, teenagers and raising them. But going back to Psalms 127, where it says that children are the blessing from God. And the text literally says, the sons of youth are like arrows and blessed is a person who fills in um, uh, uh, their bag with such arrows. So we need to decide how we raise our children. If you want a good arrow, you need to direct it well and you need to release the arrow. This principle, these two elements, these are two parallel truths are important in raising children. What are two mistakes that uh, we as parents commit raising boys and girls who are teens. First mistake, we don't direct them. Evident things, most clear things, we think that they must understand them by themselves. But we think it's clear for us, it should be clear for them, but it's not. Questions of sexual maturity, uh, questions of relationship with God. Every father needs to be assured that, that their uh, child has God in their mind. I think it's uh, discussed in Romans 1 about Gentiles who do not know God at all, but by our nature we are all like those Gentiles and children who do not have the authority of Jesus Christ in um, um, their heart and their life, they can create idols. Then question of identity, question of values, what choices we make, ethical matters, question of relationships, and so on. All these similar things, and again, I'll go back to consideration. These are evident things, why we should talk about them, but quite often these evident things should be discussed in detail. So the first mistake is that um, parents uh, do not direct their children, but another uh, mistake that parents do not release their children because arrow is strong when you give it direction and certain impulse. So it would cover the necessary distance and um, reach necessary target, achieve result. But very often it happens that mother or father parents, they keep their arrows in their quiver. They keep caring for their children. It's not a matter of buying an apartment for children where children uh, would move uh, to live independently. But it's parents who bought the apartment, who pay the utilities, who clean up, and then cook for the children. It's like getting an arrow and holding it, carrying it, maybe trying to hit the uh, target by uh, pushing the arrow into the target. My uh, principle is to build the arrow, to direct it, and release it. Small children require parents to be police officers and nanny for them, but time will come and father and mother become more like a coach, and after some time they become consultants. And that's a normal process, that's healthy process of growing up. For parents, very often it's very painful because children are um, reaching age of 40 and parents are still caring for them. Parents still say the final word and adults remain children. In fact, uh, their relationship with children. We have a saying. Uh, of what kind of parents they are if they did not lead their child to their retirement. So we are uh, parents. What else we can add? Uh, what parents, uh, what else they uh, should do? I 
absolutely agree with what Alex says. I think that the reason that the consequences that of parents that they do not leave this arrow go, I would like to ask uh, each mother or father, what is your identity? If it's a mature Christian and he sees his uh, identity that he is a father and not that first of all uh, he is a child of God, I think this is the way a parent's can continue to look for their identity, not in God, but rather in their son or daughter. And this this way, they would help their child. This uh, father or mother could not, live th could not live through. They try to find their identity in their child. And this is the... Uh, this is the moment they would not uh, let your child go. They would uh, work through to the retirement, their children. And also I would add the question of the personal identity is very crucial. And I also would add uh, it can be uh, misconceptional, but we need to think about it. I think children, not just teenagers, children at all, they would feel more safety when they will know that father, first of all, he loves God, and then secondly, he loves mother, and then he loves children. So the same way mother would for love um, her husband more than children, because children, these are they are gas in our lives. Very important, very valuable, given to us by God, but at the same time, they're temporary guests because there would be time and we need to let them go. But husband, he is one flesh with his wife, spouse, and he stays together. Uh, then children in the safety and they are developed differently when they know that father loves uh, their mother and mom, first of all, will pour a borscht for father. These are small things, but they form the values, the values and uh, attitude towards life and personal identity. I think these are very, very important moments. So we are talking th about three very crucial moments that uh, uh, teenagers ask themselves, who am I, what's my identity, who are with and what for? So if we ask what for, this is a personal mission, goal and profession. So how could we help uh, teenagers, we are talking about teenagers in their age with their opportunities. How can we help them to understand what they are for? Yeah, me too. I would like to listen to that too. So, Kola, you've written a course in prof orientation. So, so what's the point? The main idea? I like the uh, Alex idea. I would like to hear. Uh, talking about professional orientation when we were writing this uh, course, maybe the first that I start uh, in professional orientation, the question of the dream. I understand right now in the 21st century, when we start with this millennium, 2000 years, the Ukraine goes into uh, in the Western mentality. In the Western mentality, it's more pragmatic. There are goals, there are those who fulfill them, and there are achievement of the result. Very often we are taught, uh, set your goals, reach your goals. I think goals are its a very narrow understanding of the goal. The main thing is start dreaming. So I started talking uh, to teenagers about their dreams. The first two days, if this professional orientation, if it takes a fortnight, two weeks, the first couple of days, one or day, they say what m dream is. So what do you dream about? I, I dream about car. Is it a dream or is it a goal? When we talk about the difference between dream or goal, we say, yes, this is goal. What else are you dreaming about? I dream to live in a house. Is it a dream or a goal? I understand when children, when they go to home, they go home, talk to their parents. It's a great challenge. And we are being adults. We don't understand and we do not separate the, the uh, un, th two things, goal and dreams, goals and dreams. 
So we need to, for teenagers to think about the dreams of their childhood. I believe that each person that comes into this world, they, he or she have has its own mission. And the mission, one person said, to be God's hands here on earth. And I believe that each person, each child is born with a mission. It's very important to open this mission. And if we close some goals, I think we just uh, reach somebody's dream. So first of all, in professional orientation, we talk about dream, that the child will start dreaming. If I could uh, talk uh, right now, address to parents, I've already taught seven uh, uh, times our course over the last two years. Just think, have you, of course, if you have a teenager right now, they have many questions, they make many questions, or if you have tension in your relationships, uh, just think about four or five years, has your child initiated to bring a cup or something and then they broke? Uh, have you got angry, mom? Mothers can remember, one remember a girl w would come back from school and says, Mom, I just re recited a poem and I, I did it the best way. I got A. And then mom cut herself by accident or mom started to become angry. If we talk about children uh, 12 years, then mom, depending on... Uh, whether you have a son or a daughter, when they say, I fell in love, it's my first love, and two days later, you had tension, and then mom said, again, with your this and that person. So when these secrets that children have in their hearts, when you turn it against their children, have you ever had this? Uh, if in 12 years, teenagers read 12 years, and they close in themselves, because they understand I've told the best, uh, the point, the best way. And I uh, I told my mom about that, how wonderful it is. And she becomes angry. I understand. Stop. Okay. I did everything great, but I was, uh, but I was scolded at me. I was, uh, somebody scolded me. And so teenagers' passivity, it could be, tell me, what do you want me to become? I will be. Where will you direct me? I'll play the game. So if there are problems, I would uh, feed back to you. This is your decision, not mine. So the first thing. And the second, sometimes a, ch a child stop dreaming. He becomes or she, they become pragmatic. They do not, they stop dreaming. And like, how do you, do you uh, help your children to dream? Do they tell you about your dream? Oh, they don't need my help in that. They handle it rather well. I agree that the uniqueness of a teenager's time, this is ability to dream. And uh, the, so if dreams become your memories, the person become older. And teenagers age, as one author said, this is a, a time of opportunities. There are so many open doors. And I agree with Kola that God, he appointed some the best for the child. And my personal opinion is that God has given to each teenager, each person, opportunity, abilities, and right to be formed, to be developed, to do, uh, to have choice within uh, within limits of his or her talents, gifts, and within the propositions and chances that he has or she has around in a social life. And this internal fire is very important, dream or passion. So how can we see this fire, this passion in child? so that we can support, rather, to pull the arrow and then let it go. So a child dreams, is dreaming. So this is the first thing we're talking. It's very important to us to teach uh, how to dream or support a dream. So it's not just a fantasy, one or two. So how do you handle that? Uh, personally, what I, I try, I try to open many opportunities for children that they can try different things, one, second, third, like it's a conditional, like a sandbox, so they can try 
music, they can try sports, modern, different modern uh, opportunities of education that children would try everything. And if we uh, postpone something that is not that is dealt with a teacher. Like I had a ne negative uh, experience. When I started learning foreign language, it was easy for me, but I had a conflict with my teacher. And due to that, I, I said goodbye to foreign languages. And I, um, I wish I didn't right now, I regret. But on the whole, you see even on the uh, on grades, you see that your child is excited about you, and you see what it does not excite a child very much. You can, and you can direct the person within. So where to direct the arrow to the left or to the right, and then a higher or lower. This is something that comes with time. Thank you, Mikola. You've said that the first thing that you learn you you uh, teach teenagers to dream okay and there are there were examples when teenagers would come with dreams big dreams yes yes i stopped at a dream point y yes somebody said that dreams without realization it's just fantasy of course first you need to start dreaming but then acting Act. I think a dream and action, they go together, but dream comes first. I absolutely agree with Alec that the, the main thing, the best thing is to try yourself in different things. That's why in one schools where I w I'm working right now, uh, we have a school parliament. Th this is the idea that I was caring for a year or a year and a half. I tried to put it on the paper, then I shared with uh, our principal of a school, and she supported me and she shared uh, her uh, her ideas, and uh, they coincided, and that's how this idea was born. A school parliament is, I would say, first of all, this is work with the identification. In the school parliament, everybody who comes, the first they need to understand I am, it's not just I'm selfish, I. I am, at least this micro social life, this is where I study. We don't have that many children where we started our parliament about, there are about 50 kids. The par the parliament's task is to solve the problems of the school what it means we raise uh, questions we uh, have surveys uh, of our children we choose three problems and the most painful the parliament's trying to s solve and then it's like Ted's talk if you heard so after that teenagers they understand their identity i'm school i identify myself uh, with the challenges of the school and the the, the biggest uh, the biggest goal is not to solve the problems of others uh, rather to change ourselves secondly i am my um, uh, i am the part of the city where i live I'm my local area. So these are teenagers did? Yes, this is just for teenagers. This is formation of leadership for teenagers. But here there are so many skills. This is social surveys. So to come up to a person and start asking them questions. So for teenagers, it was a big challenge. I remember myself being at this age, but this is a good idea. Many teenagers said, I understood that I, it's for me easily to start a conversation with a f somebody I don't know, and it can help me in life. So we had uh, uh, we carried we carried a social survey, and we understood there is absence of uh, green plants. It's in in the Kiev. There is metro Osakarki, and there is not enough of green area. And then we try to put on a state budget. We um, have uh, written a project uh, together with ch uh, children. 
with teenagers for um, participatory budget, that is, funds allocated for the best project uh, in the competition. If our project wins, then we'll get a huge amount of money for its implementation. If we win, we'd be able to make a small park. That's a question when uh, teenagers could understand that my identification, I am not just myself, I am school, I am a solution to school's problems. I can identify myself with problems of our um, district or a block, and I can identify with solving those problems also with my city, also with a whole nation. So they have written this project of planting trees, building a park. Yes, and you are implementing it now? Well, we are at the stage of studying how we could promote our project, our idea, in order to get enough votes. Because there are many projects competing for the budget. Other people are uh, promoting their own projects, their projects are promoted by local councilmen. And we want to show that we can make a project prepared by teenagers with whole world ahead of them. That's grades 8 through 10. They could be agents of change. They need to believe that they could be agents of change in this country to show that they can do something to show example to adults so that adults could be inspired by this idea and adults could start working with um, uh, the part participatory budget. I don't know um, how it's done in European, but in Kiev, if uh, someone wants to have a stadium by their home uh, or to plant some trees and they want um, the municipal budget to pay for it, they just need to develop this project and submit for the competition. Because usually people expect the government to build everything for them. We want to have super president who will make our life better or super pastor who will make our uh, spiritual life super spiritual. That's a great topic to discuss with teenagers. It's important to find proper approach, uh, proper language to talk to them. But I think one of those languages of communication with teenagers is a language of superheroes. There are many of them in comics, in cinema. It's an interesting part of our popular culture. Marvel, DC, and many others have created a number of super creations that we talk about very often. There are two roots for appearance of super heroes, um, one good, one bad. Um, good root is that people seek Jesus. If they uh, want a uh, super Jesus in their life, uh, but they don't have, then they invent uh, Iron Man or Tor. People invented gods, uh, idols, if they did not follow the true God in the past. But the bad root is that they expect someone, iron man or iron woman, a president or pastor who will come, super person who would solve all my problems, super parents who would make everything good for me. But the topic of responsibility is the key topic in our society, one of most painful. It started with Garden of Eden when Adam Adam said, well, it's God, uh, your fault, because you have given me the wife who committed this kind of crime. So he uh, evaded his own responsibility. The idea of responsibility is one of those key ideas in films and uh, super stories, because it's not about super abilities, it's about responsibility for the choice we make. And this right to choose should be a good catalyst in life of teenagers. They need to know this is my choice. This is what I do. This is what I choose. We need to help our children not just to try out in some professions. We need to help them take responsibility, implement ideas first on small scale and then 
further and further, more and more. This is a great service that parents could make to their children. Another thing I'd like to add, I often talk to Bahdan, my son, on topic of his future. Usually, he initiates those conversations. He would come, time or out of time, and he would talk. I try to find the opportunity to talk uh, to him, and he says, I don't know what to do uh, in the future, what uh, to involve myself in. And the more we talk, it's not just a matter of involvement, it's a matter of safety and security for him. He wants to provide for his future family. He doesn't want to finish his life somewhere under the bridge as a homeless person. There is always a temptation to direct children uh, to a road of easy money or guaranteed money. In this case, we're telling our children, go and become IT specialists. Everything would be great. Just play on the keyboard and earn this kind of money or more and more and more. But not everyone can become IT specialists. For some, it's easy and uh, they enjoy it. But someone can be more effective and uh, find more pleasure in different domain, even earn more in different domain. So the opportunities we create for children and that we study carefully with them is um, one of levers for their future uh, choices, their professional orientation, and uh, their development of life. Thank you, friends, for watching us. Thank you for asking questions. Thank you, Oleg and Mikola, for uh, uh, answering. And I'll read those questions in a moment. But uh, before that, I'd like to ask you, Oleg, you uh, have mentioned these uh, concepts. First, you said choice. The age of teens, people need to understand. I can make a choice. This is what I choose. And they need to have certain qualities of their character for the proper choice. So, what are the top three qualities parents need to develop in teenagers, parents or teachers? Top three qualities of teenage character that need to be developed. Responsibility was number one. You mentioned, you started McCullough that through this project you'd like them to understand it's my responsibility, it's my district, it's my school, it's my country. Responsibility. I'll underline that quality as well. To see the need to take responsibility. What else? Faithfulness, I would say. It's not about teenage years. Faithfulness is something people need to carry throughout their lives. There is more... There are a lot of criticisms about our current education. Why people... Um, uh, of humanities need to study exact science or physics, for example, or why um, future IT specialists should study humanities. And I explain to my children that these um, uh, sinuses and cosinuses might uh, uh, not be helpful, but uh, the connections in your brain that would develop in the time of your study will stay for your uh, humanities or for your mission or for your preaching or for your sports, for your coaching of a team. So you need to understand that faithfulness is rewarded even when it doesn't seem to be efficient when faithfulness is not beneficial, or so it seems. Faithfulness is something God expects from his ministers. So can we um, uh, um, read, um, stated by uh, collecting uh, victories in sports, in studies, in um, completed tasks? So in addition to a responsibility and faithfulness, what would you say? Well, two things is faithfulness in completing task. I see a huge challenge in the fact that 
were telling teenagers to try everything, and they are trying everything, but as soon as they start doing something, a moment comes when you need to work harder, you need to overcome an obstacle, you need to force yourself to climb higher. And teenager says, okay, I'm not trying this anymore, I'll try something else. And it's like ordering something in a cafe and then not liking the dish and throwing it away. Now, at uh, uh, these um, times, we have crisis of families, institution very often. As I talk to boys, men, I um, see um, they are saying, I abandoned my wife, I dropped my girlfriend, uh, I, I like... Uh, I don't feel like continuing anymore. And this idea of uh, throwing half-eaten pizza transfers in uh, throwing half-developed uh, family. But if you take something on, you need to complete, you need to bring the case uh, to closure, not uh, just throw uh, the activity halfway. If you made a choice, you got married, and bring it all the way to the end, like until death do us part. How about profession? Well, we are telling our high schoolers, try uh, doing something, but complete the task. If you are in research, please complete the research and submit the results. If um, whether you win or lose, complete it and then decide something else. Because when when uh, people are just starting and uh, dropping things, uh, that's a failure. Um, because uh, many teachers even do not grade the dropped subjects. We have example of school parliament or social ministry in the church when I was involved in teenage ministry in the church, my heart is about charity. In 1990s, when father abandoned us, my mother had to work uh, three jobs, two during the day, one during the night. I remember uh, that time, and I heard for the teenagers from poor families. So in our teenage ministry, we were looking for two uh, things we made uh, Christian camps for teenagers from poor families or from the war zone, and we were trying to find money to support those poor teenagers in the camp. Second thing we would uh, do, we would feed uh, homeless people together with teenagers. Together with um, teenagers, we started uh, that ministry, and then they would continue. They would uh, gather sandwiches they would even promote feeding the hungry inviting people not to spend money on extra chocolate but invest into feeding the hungry of course you might have different attitudes but they wanted to be god's hands for a certain person uh, my apologies i am a father and i would uh, be concerned how did uh, other parents respond to this because homeless people have infections, have uh, dangers. I would meet with pastor and parents every week, and that's the most common question I would get. I, I understand responsibility, and when we explain we give food uh, to homeless, I would be pouring in uh, to the pan. For the homeless, uh, they need contact, uh, so they need to shake hands. I would be the one shaking hands. Safety was of utmost importance. We understood that. But there were some times where we would not just help homeless people, but there was a woman, for example, who uh, was uh, placed in a hospital. She was dressed well. She left the hospital. And uh, we kept the distance of a meter and a half, but a teenager would talk to her. I understand that's a huge issue, and I struggle with it quite often. I understand responsibility, but 
as I think back to those events, I'm not sure if I would uh, do everything the same way. But honestly, we just lived uh, by faith. We asked, of course, for many prayers because we understood that some homeless people would uh, cough and we capped uh, this distance of meter or two meters that was challenge for homeless as well. But all homeless understood that safety is important. So children would be carrying things and we would hand out as adults. This topic of charity mercy is important, but uh, this phrase uh, is often repeated that good person is not a profession to contradict professional qualities and personal qualities. And from what we talked, um, this interesting phrase uh, was kept coming to my head. We talked about mercy, we talked about faithfulness, and we talked about responsibility. I remember words of Jesus Christ from this parable of talents. When uh, the landlord comes and talks to his um, trusted servants, and he says every time, good and faithful servant, kind or good is about mercy, but faithful is uh, bringing the work to the end, and the servant is about responsibility. Of course, we don't live in times of slavery anymore, um, but contextualizing this parable in our time, um, I would accept. So kindness is mercy, um, faithfulness, and then uh, responsibility. Thank you. That's a good insight. I'd like to conclude this idea that I have not finished um, the thought um, that I started when we talked about professional orientation. When I wrote this book uh, on professional orientation, I uh, had that thought. I don't know where I, it came from, but the thought is, Professional orientation is about uh, changing paradigm. It's not about what I will know or what I will practice, but what I will uh, give to humanity. MTI, um, Massachusetts, um, MIT, MIT um, uh, Institute of Technology, and um, he studies... Um, this is a story, if I remember correctly, maybe I will write it in the comment to this video. Um, um, he says, my friends who came in most expensive cars and uh, they owned uh, three houses, but they came uh, um, having divorced and remarried uh, several times. I have children from different marriages. So what's profession? What's joy? And good profession, he said, good recognition, good money, still at the age of 40, will not help. Okay, people break. I have achieved so many things. I have so much, but why? What was it for? So Paradigm is not about what I get from my profession, but what I will give with my profession. This is the most important idea, the idea of mercy, that life of a person, the purpose of a person is to be God's hands on earth, to be for someone and not to be for myself. Interesting. Changing paradigm. Profession is not for me, but for what I can give. There is a question from chat. Yana Malashkina is asking, is it normal not to choose profession that you like, but will not uh, provide for you financially in the future? Could you do that again? Is it normal to disregard profession you like because it cannot provide for you financially in the future? I understand the question is, is it normal to choose profession that um, you don't like but will bring you good money why and should i choose something that will not uh, earn you living what would you say alex uh, alek alek yana hello first of all i would underlie the thing that we've just said and point it out that professional orientation and the future choice in life 
it's not what to do, but rather who to be. In this context, I would say is very crucial, very important to the words that Kola just said. We live in the epoch of selfishness, egocentrism. This is a tumor of our society. People live for themselves. They organize everything around themselves to learn to give and to put the interest of others higher than our own. This is something foreign f that is not for this world right now. S some people say even it's danger because people will use you, you will not reach, achieve anything in life. So try and try if you give advice, not to their side how much money, will I make in this profession? But first of all, how I can be maximum effective in this or in the other sphere? Jan, I, I will uh, speak from my point of view. When I was uh, finishing graduating university, I knew that I would be a teacher, I needed a master's, uh, and I knew why I need my master's, not just bachelor degree, because I need I wanted to teach uh, at the university, and then on the second course, I got married, and then I understood that I cannot make much money by teaching. And of course, I ran away, I went into business, I become a merchandiser, and I would uh, hang their toothbrushes with my uh, uh, diploma with uh, uh, with Mark, and I was uh, I, I was uh, invited uh, I was invited to to teach, but I was a merchandiser. I was a simple merchandiser, and people told me you look like somebody different, and people uh, shared their problems. Uh, with the work of our brand, in two months, I was appointed to be a manager, uh, a human resources manager, and then I also was promoted and I had 122, uh, I was in charge of 122 different places, and then I was a, a director and I came to the point that now I am a teacher. At that point, I was very, I was very, uh, I was very happy. I I became successful. We had everything with my wife. We could afford not a helicopter, but afford many, many, many things. In a uh, for an average uh, key of citizen citizen, we could afford many things. Most of, but uh, maybe three or four years later. I I didn't want to go to work. I didn't want to go there. I had everything. Even when I was the director of that firm, and there were people uh, 20 years older, they called me Mr. You. I remember my accountant. And I was just like a young man. It did not bring happiness to me. But then when I made decision, when I was 29 uh, 30 years, so 10 years before you are 40, they say there is that breaking point, what you will do. So I made my decision to leave everything and I went to was secondary school and my salary, my, sa my salary, of course, decreased by maybe 10 times. My salary was 10 times smaller and I remember that we could afford 10 times less things than before. So that was the t time at my previous walk we could uh, we could fly to Sri Lanka to different resorts and we I've seen many different resorts and now when I'm a teacher I realize we need to learn to save money maybe somebody would judge me I understand me somebody of parents will say this is crazy and yes but I understood one thing and maybe there are other people or teenagers or that ask themselves, God loves you. Even if you go, uh, if you go to work somewhere that you do not dream, it's not your, the job of your dreams, God will still love you. Even if you do not make enough money, God will still love you. 
and you, you know this with the time passing my my salary is much more but the expense is expenditure also less and my i have a mobile phone and it can it lasts for six uh, for six years, somebody tells me you have an old, uh, old brand, or old model of the telephone, but it doesn't break. God blesses, and I'm okay with that. I talked to a daughter of one famous pastor. She said, in our church, there are girls in the church who their parents make ten times more. But when I understand what I can afford and what she can afford, God blesses. If you live in your vocation, in your calling. Do not expect, okay, I live in my calling, God will give me, I put him into frames. No, God can bless even at work that, I don't want to say some, I don't want to uh, make some professionals more important. So in the least paid uh uh, the, the least uh, paid salary has become the most paid during the time of coronavirus. So everything can change. Many big corporations they um, they just uh, they went back bankrupt. The airlines also uh, many workers in airlines uh, have been uh, have been fired. So in reality. So many things can change so fast. Just ask yourself, what is your dream? And maybe it will give you opportunity to make a decision. But God loves you anyway. You know what? In all of this, in this context, is very important than the following thing. This is what I'm talking about with my son. There is a question that we need to discuss by the time they, uh, uh, in order of the importance. And if you are being a teenager, you postponed, you delay the uh, question of your relationship with God and your identity in Jesus Christ, then if this question is not solved, then all the rest will be impossible to solve. You'll have many mistakes. There are many uh, trials, ups and downs. It's like put puzzle together, but there is one big uh, picture and according to it, all the rest little puzzles come together. So going back to have God in our heart, minds. It's not a good phrase from Romans. This is our life practice. Uh, what is my guide in life by make, when I make money? When I spend money? What, who is my guide? When I spend time in quarantine, oh, what do I do during the time at work? It all comes out from my relationship with God. And as a pastor, I'm convinced that this is the most important question that has to be solved. And then others, other questions of providing provision, uh, uh, satisfaction of your life and the time of safety, the feeling of safety, the ministry, ministry to others, the question of identity, the professional growth in other spheres, the questions of health included, they will just uh, put in their places as a puzzle will come together. And by living for Jesus, for his glory, it's much safer and easier to live. There is a question, Bogdan Vaitovich, he is asking, could Oleg uh, give uh, advice books from personal experience that would uh, help to understand a boy, teenager, teenager boy? Books for understanding teenagers. These are for boys. Bogdan Vaitovich, if, if he has already read The Adventure of Tom Sawyer, <laughs> If Bogdan Vaitovich has already read to kill a, a mocker, mockingbird, mockingbird. So I think uh, so. Most of the contribution in the understanding of teenagers has already made. I will not give you the uh, list. Uh, learn to read your children as a book. They're open. 
but the question is, do we really see their abilities, their, their natural talents? What, what is important for them? What they cherish? What they are afraid of? What are their fears? Even if you don't read any books, trip the age of opportunities. This is a very authoritative book in many gospel, uh, evangelistic gospel churches. It's very good. But treat your child on the page 13, if he is 13, on four, page 14, if he is 14, even if it's not clear enough, if a bad penmanship, they're open for their communication. They're open. Володар Мух, Володар of flies, I don't hear, flies, Володар, the of flies and how to be a pastor for your child and there is also a chapter for teenagers Peter Crift the best in life maybe it's not about how to bring a child but it will give opportunity to see how teenagers uh, contemplate what uh, topics are in their head I think Bruce Wilkinson uh, the one given the dream it's how to see your position as a father. There's also a question. Anya Fichuk is asking, when a teenager says, when a teenager says, He is interested in everything in balance, but there is not something special that he is passionate about. Okay, this is my dream. And he, he likes different things balanced. It's better than a t when a teenager doesn't like anything at all. So even by this fact, we should rejoice. Totally possible that to their total to the full extent, the dream will be formed later. Uh, they mean that he, he is a developed, um, multifaceted way. And there are people, they have a, a bigger capacity, but a smaller depth. But both, both categories, they find their way in life. So let him continue in different little things, different spheres. If there is nothing that he is very passionate and he's ready to go deeply, let him, as, uh, as for me, just let him just develop. So it's positive, right? Is it, it's, it's okay. It's positive that he has different sides. Yes, of course. He's not on the sofa in this uh, shape with a telephone and he is not interested in, any, in anything. Another question. What to do if for the teenager it is hard to find that he doesn't, if he, let's paraphrase, if he doesn't want anything from life, like I don't want anything, I don't want to dream about anything, I'm okay with everything, so what do you want from me? I don't have any dreams. I'm sorry, there is a philosophy of young people, teenagers, I don't plan anything because whatever I plan, it will not come true, I will not get married, I will live with parents at home, yes, maybe. And there's an apartment, there is food, all of us on the table, the plates are clean. Uh, concerning the first question, if a little bit of everything, if it's uh, grade eight, nine, then my uh, question as a teacher, has he tried in some uh, Olympics or has he tried himself in a con uh, competitions when you work without anybody if you're are you in sports do you have a teamwork so that you could try yourself you could see yourself if it's a father or a teenager first do i am am i comfortable with myself to do something or do i like to do something in a team so if i like uh if i am a leader i like to be on a team 
or if I am a, a team player and I like to uh, fulfill the work. So these skills should be developed. So if ac academically the person is being developed, try in this kind of skills. Many people say that soft skills they are on the first in the first place so what can you do who you are it comes on the first place and then academical skills on the second place because there are so many so much information and if a child needs something to master some kind of subject academically it's very easy two three months and it's easy so interesting, the academic skills and soft skills, what's the difference between them? Yes, academic skills, we are talking about what I know, what do I know, what I remembered, what I understand out of all this, this is more narrow, how I apply all of this in life, and what I can analyze and see how it works from what I've learned. After analysis, there is a summary synthesis, how can I create something new? And the last is critical uh, thinking. This is more academical. Soft skills is like, how can I uh, handle a relationship with other people, towards other people? What are my uh, virtues, qualities of my character? It's not something academic, what I can do. You know, boys, thank you that we've been talking for enough time. I think we need to kind of uh, close we have we've been for one uh, one hour and 17 we will we're going to close but before that uh, advice is for parents how so how to help uh, children who am I who am I with and what am I for what am I for so if we could summarize everything that was just said, what are what what could be the advice for parents or for those who work with uh, teenagers? I would add one thing probably uh, to what I've just said, direct, let go, this is your choice. I would remind that do not make teenagers live your lives and put and make your dreams come true in their lives. What happened into in your lives? Let it be there. They they're alike like you, but not they're not just the same way like you. As a pastor, I uh, I'm not sure that my uh, son will become a pastor. If you're a businessman, it doesn't mean that your your child has to become a deputy or a minister or a businessman. So let children uh, realize, fulfill their dreams. Mikola, also, I just want to repeat. I absolutely agree with Oleg, but one more time, I want to talk to parents. Do not find your identity in your children. First, find your identity in God. You see how God will direct you and your children will change. Many often uh, parents say, I want to change my child. Uh, so uh, this is the answer in the question. If if children do not want to do anything, uh, parents, find your identity in God. If you will be changed, the teenagers will be changed. They will put aside their cell smartphones. As far as advice to the parents may be the main thing. You're creating terms and conditions for the growth. Remember the scripture says, a God grows. Create these conditions, create these circumstances where the uh, child can try himself in music, in sports. If they do not want anything, pray for them. Uh, ask them, what are your dreams? If I am maybe gil guilty before you, maybe it was at five years, seven years, uh, just talk to your children. When you will be looking for identity in Christ, think about the moments when you were angry with uh, your child, when they came, um, maybe not on time, but they showed great results. So if you discuss all these little moments, it can lead to some maybe tearful talk because children might tell you 
something that they uh, something they were hurt and it's in their hearts that will tell you you you're able to return your children to their dream and then ask them how can i help you to realize to come into practice your dream of course you look on your finances your your possibilities so when a child start growing you've created these conditions for them to grow uh, so the book uh, the one who gives cream dream so remember that maybe you thought it was a pear, but it's a apple tree. You cannot uh, demand the uh, a pear, pear tree bring apples. So if you see your child become not uh, the person that you want, wanted him or her to be, you go back to your identity in Christ. If he's growing and he wants to change something just let him go but we of course we understand the certain terms and limits and the main for parents advice for those who have eight and nine grade uh, let a give opportunity to children to show themselves in soft skills and academic uh, skills give them chance to compete and to see to see where they are. Somewhere before 11th grade, I have a great request for you that this summer a child could have more peace, help the child to in reading, in scripture, and that they would find find uh, find what they want so that by the end of the 11th grade, they would understand what to do, what do they need, uh, uh, what exams, they would like to pass because by the end of May they will have to pass a certain number of exams and they need to know they need to get ready for them over the year. So if you've chosen something, if you're graduating, if you did not like something, believe me, uh, I geographical uh, faculty I finished and my second and then I uh, finished uh, theological seminary. And um, my brother also works as IT director in air, air company, but he is not. But he finished uh, pedagogical university and doesn't have to do anything with that. So we have we have uh, different degrees from where we work. A Any time you can change your you can change your work, but do not stop. Let them finish what they've started. It's interesting. I've noticed this practice of um, graduating from high school or graduating university is a crisis, is a challenge, is transformation in life. And there is a practice that graduates from high school or from college, they take a year to reset, to uh, reboot, not go to university right away, work for a year after university, take uh, some sabbatical before you get immersed in work. I'd like to add something to all the good things that were said already. Profession is not once for all. You should not block uh, your mind that, okay, I've studied this subject in university and this is not profession of my dream. It doesn't matter whether you are a teenager or young person, young adult or uh, older uh, person. Uh, you can become anyone, everyone. Your limit uh, is in your head. If um, your surrounding keeps criticizing you that you are not able to do things, then it's more difficult. So, dear parents, uh, we hope that you are inspired to inspire your children, your teenagers, to direct them to uh, take this bow uh, to pull the string and then release the arrow. Thank you, Ole. Thank you, Mikola. Thank you, friends, for watching us. And uh, thank uh, I look forward to seeing you on next Sunday at uh, 2 o'clock. We'll continue with family topics. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.